There we go. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first uh, Quran lecture. Razia Khala uh, invited me to start doing this, these weekly Quran lectures. And uh, I've prepared something for today. And I'm going to try to make it short. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Um, probably a little over half hour, no more than that. Um, if any of you are having trouble hearing me, or if you are having any other difficulty, let me know in the chat window. Right now, you are all muted. So if you start talking, I won't be able to hear you, but you should be able to hear me. So let me know if you're having difficulty. All right. <clears throat> okay, let me share my screen. There we go. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first uh, Quran lecture. Razia Khala uh, invited me to start doing this, these weekly Quran lectures. And uh, I've prepared something for today. And I'm going to try to make it short. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Um, probably a little over half hour, no more than that. Um, if any of you are having trouble hearing me, or if you are having any other difficulty, let me know in the chat window. Right now, you are all muted. So if you start talking, I won't be able to hear you. But you should be able to hear me. So let me know if you're having difficulty. All right. <clears throat> OK, let me share my screen. All right. <clears throat> Today we're going to have our uh, first Quran lecture. And um, let me give you a quick background on what this uh, lecture is uh, all about. Razia Khala asked me to do these Quran lectures because uh, I believe Fasi has gone to Pakistan for uh, his studies. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants a lot of uh, uh, success to him uh, in, the, in the Islamic studies that he's doing in Pakistan. But uh, she wanted us to continue our Quran lectures, the weekly Quran lectures that we've been, we had been doing with Fussy, and she asked me to do uh, the speaking this time instead. So what I did was I prepared an introductory lecture and what it's going to be about. Uh, we have a chat. Oh, let's see. Okay, another chat request. No video, we can't see you. It's okay. If you can't see me, it's not a problem. I, I currently have video disabled. But you should be able, you should be seeing my screen. Should, does everybody see my screen? Chat, uh, put it in the chat window if you can see my screen. You should be seeing Quran lecture introduction. Okay, good. Okay, good. So you should be seeing my PowerPoint. If you can't see the, if you can't see my video, that's okay. I haven't enabled that yet, but uh, you should be seeing my PowerPoint. Dad is saying that he's not seeing my PowerPoint. So give me one second here. <clears throat> Dad. Uh, you can't, I, I have unmuted you. Can't, you can't see my screen? You can't see the rights and responsibilities of the Quran? Can you see that? No. You can't see that? No. Okay. Okay. Mom, now can you see it? Maybe better. What do you see on your screen? Mom, what do you see? But it's a chat ka bolika wa raha aur kuch bhi nahi hai. Okay, minimize that. Go back to the uh, go back to the other screen. Ha, main us pe jaati hu lekin wo us pe kuch wo bane hue hain.
अब इस पे जो है अफशा का वो वो लिखा हुआ है आतिफ का तुम्हारा सब का वो नाम लिखा हुआ लेकिन उस पर कुछ बना हुआ नहीं है क्लिक माय नेम कर दिया तुम्हारे नाम पे ओके okay. और फिर वो चैट स्क्रीन पे ले जाता है वापस ओके okay. Atif Akhlaq he says he also cannot see for some reason okay ha ah, i was hoping this wouldn't happen some people can see some people can't weird okay um mom uh mm-hmm. turn your phone sideways acha and basically hang up and ask dad to join you again to the meeting okay okay and atif mamu can you do that as well uh i can see your screen press beta ओके गुड ओके गुड ठीक है फिर मैं आपको म्यूट कर देता हूँ आपकी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो गई है मामा की नहीं हो पा रही ओके ओके लेट्स होप माम जॉइंस इन द मीन टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द स्लाइड शो सो दैट स्टार्ट ओके सो द पर्पस ऑफ दिस लेक्चर वाज This out. This out. So the purpose of this lecture was to to give you an introduction of what uh, lectures are going to be following. And by the way, if you have an, any difficulty during this, go ahead uh, enter something in the chat window. Um, I'll see what I can uh, if uh, if I can, if you're having difficulty, I'll uh, I'll 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 help you. So <clears throat> the Quran lecture. Where 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 does this come from? The purpose of these meetings is to make sure that we don't lose touch. with the quran because uh, of the absence of fussy now just because fussy is gone that does not mean we should be losing touch we should be listening to these lectures on a regular basis or at least organizing it amongst ourselves on a regular basis so the purpose of today, today's lecture is to give you an introduction of every lecture that is going to follow and to give you an overview uh, and a short uh, introduction of everything that we're going to do so let's get started okay what's on the agenda today Today I'm going to let you know the lecture format of every lecture that is going to be following. Uh the lecture format is going to be as follows that we're going to read the Quran and I'm going to recite it for you not just read it I'm going to recite it for you. And then we're going to read the translation of some part of the Quran and then we're going to discuss amongst ourselves I'll, I'll give you some pointers from my life and some uh, from some of the books I've read how to implement what we've learned and what I recited for you. um in your own per, in your own lives today specifically just for this lecture because this is the first lecture i'm going to talk about the rights and responsibilities of the quran in the sense that what rights does the quran have over us personally um uh, and what are the responsibilities that the quran owes us in return that if we fulfill the rights of the quran what will the quran do for us and finally at the end of the lecture i'm going to ask you for your suggestions um what do you think that i should cover um as part of the future lessons if you have any other questions comments suggestions etc uh, we will end with that so let's go into the rest of the lecture <clears throat> okay the rights and responsibilities of the quran um i did a quick slide on the left hand side you see the rights of the quran on the right hand side you see the responsibilities of the quran and what what do i mean by that In our religion there is a duality in the sense that there are rights and responsibilities practically to everybody everyone who is married owes a responsibility to their spouse and in return they have rights in the sense that we have rights over our wives and our wives have rights over us it's a give and take similarly our parents have rights over us but we do owe them some responsibilities similarly in the quran there are five rights that the Quran has over us that means these are the rights that the Quran has we must fulfill those rights those are mentioned on the left hand side i don't know if you can see my uh uh my cursor but those i those you see on the left hand side those are the five rights the Quran has over us but on the right hand side where the Quran's responsibilities are concerned is that if we fulfill these five rights of the Quran that if we do this for the Quran then the Quran will do this for us on the right hand side and i'll go through these each and every one one at a time so for what are the rights of the quran the rights of the quran are as follows number 1 we must recite the quran and 
we must strive to recite the Quran well. We should not be simply reading the Quran uh, in our heads or without good recitation. It's, the, it's a commandment of, in the Quran, Rattilil Quran Tartila. We should pronounce it and recite it with good recitation. We should strive to not just read the Quran, but to actually recite it in a beautiful, beautiful voice. So we, that is the first right of the Quran. We must read it and not just read it, but recite it and recite it well. The second right the Quran has over us is that we must understand it. Now, the Quran has a lot of benefit in just reading and recitation. There is plenty of benefits in the Quran with just reading and reciting the Quran. Just every letter you read in the Quran, you get one hasanat in your one good deed for reciting every letter in the Quran. But the second step is we must also understand what we're reading and what we're reciting. It is insufficient to recite the Quran without make, having an understanding of what we're reciting because without this understanding, we will not be able to implement this third right of the Quran, which is to implement what we understood and implement it into our lives. Meaning if the Quran asks us to stop doing something, we must stop doing it. But all, if all we're doing is reciting and we're not understanding, and if, then we will never be able to implement that ayah in our life. So there are ayat in, our, in the Quran that uh, uh, command us not to go near uh, zina, that command us not to go near uh, alcohol, that command us not to go near and gambling. But if we just read them and recite them, but we don't understand them, we might just fall into those things if we don't understand what is gambling, what is alcohol. So in order to implement what the Quran uh, requires of us, we must understand it. And after our understanding, we must implement it within our life. Another right of the Quran is that we must memorize it. In the sense that we must commit it, commit it to memory. And we should, as much as we can, strive to keep the Quran within our hearts. Millions of people all over the world have memorized the entire Quran. Most of us have memorized at least some part, and all of us have memorized at least Surah Al-Fatiha. Without Surah Al-Fatiha, we obviously cannot uh, read our daily prayers. So therefore, at least some part of the Quran is committed to memory of each and every single Muslim. So that is the part of the memorization. We must strive to memorize as much of the Quran as we can. And finally, the fifth and final right is that we must teach it to others. It is insufficient that if we know, we recite, we understand, we implement, we memorize, but we don't teach it to others. This is the final right of the Quran that we must attempt or we must strive to teach it to others, which is what we're trying to do here today. We're trying to learn it. We're trying to teach the Quran to others. So those are the five rights of the Quran. But on the right-hand side is the flip side of the coin. Well, if I do all of this for the Quran, it's not going to be... The, you know, I'm not going to say this is going to be easy. It's going to be hard work, learning to properly recite the Quran, learning to read books and understand and implement and memorize and teach. This is going to take some time and it's going to take effort. So what do you as a person, what do I as a person get if I implement, if I uh, fulfill these rights of the Quran? What do I get out of this? And that is where the responsibilities of the Quran come in. The Quran provides you the following, that if you fulfill these rights of the Quran, these five rights of the Quran, the Quran protects the following five things for you. Number one, that if you fulfill the rights of the Quran, the Quran will protect your iman, your faith, your belief, and your, um, your Islam, your deen. The Quran will not allow you to go astray. That's number one thing that the Quran will protect for you. It will protect your faith. It will protect your Islam. It will protect your Iman, your faith in the hereafter, your faith in the book, your faith in the messengers, your faith in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has meant, revealed in the Quran will be protected. And this is the number one thing that we want to protect in the Quran. Now, another thing that you should note is that this list is actually in order of importance number one the most important thing that we should strive to keep and safe guard within ourselves is our iman is our faith that there is a god 
that there is a hereafter where, we'll, where, we'll, where we will be questioned. That the Quran is supposed to protect our iman, our faith. And this list is in order. And by the way, we will not get kicked out anymore because I just upgraded, our, uh, upgraded my account. Our iman, our faith, and our belief is what the Quran will protect. Number two, the Quran will also protect our honor and our decency. Meaning that we will be sh protected from shameful and indecent deeds. We will be protected from things that harm us, our honor, our dignity, our decency. We will be decent people if we read and if we fulfill the five rights on the Quran that we see on the left-hand side. It is one of the most important things. Uh, I think somebody just joined. Can, can, can somebody, who just joined? Let's take a look. Okay, never mind. Okay. And it is incumbent upon any person of decency to <clears throat> make sure that their honor and decency is protected. In fact, most of us who have honor and decency amongst us, who have not lost it yet, would rather, would rather lose everything except their honor accept their decency, accept their modesty. And that is why it is number two, it, that is most important, is the right of the, the responsibilities of the Quran. It will protect your honor, it will protect your decency. Number three thing, the third thing that the Quran was revealed to protect, and in fact, this is the entire purpose of this religion, it was revealed and the Quran was revealed to protect your intellect to protect your mental capacities and to make sure that you are a thinking individual and that you're just not just like some kind of animal going through life. In the sense that when we read the Quran and even today when I do Surah Al-Buha, the Quran repeatedly quizzes the users, asks the users questions and keeps instructing the user to ponder, to think about the Quran. It will it always, always, always instructs the users, what do you think? Why do you suppose, etc., etc. It's almost like a, a, the Quran is full of the, these questions, these recommendations to ponder all over ourselves, our lives, our deaths, the signs around us, the heavens, the earth, etc. Your intellect will be protected if you, if you fulfill the rights of the Quran, your mind will be protected if you reveal, if you um, keep the rights of the Quran. Number four, your life will be protected if you read and if you fulfill the rights of the Quran. Your life is a sacred, is sacred, and the lives of those around you are sacred. And the Quran will protect your life, the life of your loved ones, even your health, even you will, be, you will be away from not just physical diseases, but from mental diseases as well, diseases of the heart. Diseases such as, diseases of the heart, such as jealousy, such as indecency, such as lying, all these diseases of the heart that can, that can creep into a person, you will be protected, your life will be protected, your physical well-being, your health will be protected, and your mental well-being, your mental health will also be protected. And finally, the Quran also protects your wealth. Everything that we see in our lives, the cars we drive, the, uh, the homes we live in, the jobs we have, etc. These are extensions of who we are. And in fact, these are good things. These aren't necessarily bad things if we, if we use them in the right channel. And the Quran was actually revealed to make sure that those things are protected for you, that you don't waste your wealth, that you don't waste your talent, that you don't waste your life. And Quran will protect these five things for you. These are the responsibilities of the Quran. If you fulfill these five, you, your return will be these five. You will be protected. Your iman will be protected. Your honor, your intellect, your life, and your wealth will be protected. So that's it for the rights and the responsibilities of the Quran. So today, I'm going to do a quick recitation of one of my favorite surah in the Quran, which is Surah Al-Buha. Surah Al-Buha is uh, 
one of my personal favorite surahs of the Quran is because it has protected me personally from a lot of difficulty all throughout the years. So first I'm going to recite it for you and then we're going to read the translation and we will talk about it in a little bit. So let's get to Surah al Buha. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wadduha Wallayli iza saja Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Okay. Now I'm going to read the translation of what we've read and then we will go to the a little bit of details of the meaning of this. وَضُّحَى By the morning's brightness وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى and by the night when it covers with darkness. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not taken leave of you, O Muhammad, nor has he detested you. وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And the hereafter is better for you than what was first. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And your Lord is going to give you and you will be satisfied. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى Did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge? وَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى and he found you lost and guided you. And he found you poor and made you self-sufficient. So the orphan do not oppress him. And for the petitioner do not repel him. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ And as for the favor of your Lord, report it. Let's go through these verses one at a time. Surah Al-Duha starts with, obviously the first word is named, which is the surah that is named after it. وَالْضُحَى By the morning's brightness. Now, these two verses, وَالْضُحَى وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Typically, they're understood with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by time, swearing by morning, and then swearing by night, by the morning's brightness and by the night as when it covers. But there are other meanings that are hidden within us. Within this. Wadduha, by the morning brightness. That's the number one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing that by the morning and by night. By the morning when it's bright and by night 
when it's darkness, meaning that I swear or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by, we swear by the morning's brightness and we swear by the darkness of night. But there is a second meaning to this as well. That it doesn't really matter what time it is, meaning whether it's morning or whether it's night. It doesn't matter what time it is, if it's bright morning or if it's a bright night. And there is a third meaning that is going to resonate with all of you as well. Us as human beings, we have good times and we have bad times. All of us are going to go through bright mornings and dark nights. And darkest of dark nights, notice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, when the night as it covers completely. Meaning that for us, there will be times when it's bright and morning and everything is good and sunny. But there will also be times when it will feel as if it's darkness all over and we're covered with it. Notice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, that whether it's day, whether it's night, we swear by day and we swear by night. It doesn't matter what time it is, whether it's morning, whether it's night. And also remember this in your personal lives. It doesn't matter if you're having a good grand old time, it's good days, or if you're going through a lot of difficulty, as if your life feels covered with darkness. If you're going through a lot of difficulty, and this is going to be appropriate for all of us listening. There are going to be good days in your life and there are going to be bad days in your life. No one can escape this. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us here is whether it's good days, whether it's bad days, whether it's bright skies, whether it's dark nights, it doesn't matter what time it is. I swear by day and by night, your Lord has not taken leave of you, nor has he detested you. Now, these verses are speaking directly to, to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But by extension, they're also speaking to us. Your Lord has not taken leave of you. That's why O Muhammad is in parentheses. Even though it's being addressed to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is addressing directly to us as well. That it doesn't matter if you're having good days or bad days, specifically in bad days. Your Lord has not taken leave of you, nor has he distested you. Meaning that we are, when we are in good days, what do we think? We tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this verse is saying, when you're in good days, just because you have forgotten your Lord, doesn't mean he has forgotten you. Just because in good days, you might, you know, not think about him anymore. That does not mean he has forgotten about you. And when it's bad days, that does not mean that he is somehow angry with you. And this happens to all of us. When we're in good days, we tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, it, he just skips our mind altogether. But when we have bad days, we start thinking ill of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That why did God do this to me? Why, did, why am I being victimized? Does God hate me? Does Allah hate me? And the answer is no. Your Lord has not taken leave of you meaning he has not forgotten about you when it's daytime, when it's good times, nor has he detested you, meaning when it's bad times, he doesn't hate you. It's just that the hereafter is better than what was first. Now, even though this translation says, and the hereafter is better than what was first, well, al-akhiratu khayru laka min al Lal akhirah doesn't just mean the hereafter, meaning the, the day of judgment and heaven and hell and all of that. We, this, this is not the moment to discuss that. Lal akhirah, akhirah also means what comes after. It doesn't just mean that your later, your akhirah is better for you, which it is. Your hereafter is better for you, which it is. But your tomorrow will always be better than your yesterday. Meaning, if today 
you are in bad days or if you're in good days, whether further good days are approaching or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test you with something, your tomorrow will be better than it was yesterday. Meaning, if today you are having a good time and if today you are having a bad time, don't forget Allah and don't despair in his mercy. Tomorrow is going to be better than what was yesterday. I was listening to a lecture by a, uh, a new Muslim. He, was, he had reverted. And he said that when he read this uh, surah, he, he cried for almost an hour. He just couldn't believe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned here. That for us, one of our greatest fears is the fear of tomorrow. What is going to happen tomorrow? And it's okay to plan for tomorrow. It's recommended to plan for tomorrow. It's recommended to plan for saving. It's recommended to plan for children's marriages. It's recommended. That's no problem. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is relieving of us is the relieving us of the stress of tomorrow. Meaning that it is his responsibility. He is promising you here that your tomorrow will be better than your yesterday. Your tomorrow will be better than your today. Your hereafter will be better than your current life. It's a promise for him. And indeed, your Lord is going to give you until you will be satisfied. Meaning that what you have in this life or what is happening to you today may feel like insufficient. But God will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed very shortly give you until you will be satisfied. Did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge? Now, this is applicable to all of us, even though it may not seem like. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. Once upon a time, we were helpless. Yatim is also somebody, not just an orphan, but an, a helpless person. All of us, once upon a time, were, came into this world totally helpless. We couldn't feed ourselves. We couldn't take care of ourselves. We couldn't clean ourselves. We could do nothing for ourselves. We were practically helpless. But who gave us refuge? Our parents did. Our parents raised us, and without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be what we, what we are today. So he found us helpless, and he gave us our parents. And he found you lost, and he guided you. Meaning that once upon a time, and this is, even though these verses are addressing our Prophet ﷺ directly, this is how it applies to us. Once upon a time, we were children. We didn't know much. Or perhaps even some of us were misguided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us to the light of Islam. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us from this verse, he claims that your tomorrow is better, your hereafter is better, and this is the evidence he's providing. He's saying, did I not find you a baby and provide you parents? Did I not find you an orphan and provide you refuge? Did I not find you misguided and guided you? Meaning, my yesterday has, my tomorrow personally has always been better than my yesterday. Always. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, did I not find you destitute? Had I, had I not found you poor and made you self-sufficient? And this is applicable to pretty much all of us. Once upon a time, I was nothing. I was completely dependent upon my parents for even pocket money. And today I have a house, I have a car, I have a phone, I have food to eat, I have a, a job. Once upon a time, I was completely poor. I was destitute. And my tomorrow was made better. So, did he not find you misguided and guide you? Did he not find you helpless and help you? And did he not find you poor and he made you self-sufficient? Remember this. All of us, this is applicable to us. We cannot forget this. That's once a while ago, we were babies and now we're adults. Once a while ago, we were misguided and now we're guided. A while ago, 
we were poor and now we are self-sufficient. <clears throat> so for the orphan, do not oppress him. Meaning that if an orphan comes to you or if you have an orphan under your care, do not oppress him. Because once a while ago, you were also helped by your father or your mother. You were also raised. You were helpless and you were helped. So do not oppress those who are helpless. Do not oppress the orphan. And do not repel the petitioner. Meaning that if a poor person comes asking for help, for money, or for anything, even though we may not be in a position to help him, we should at least not repel him. Because this is a very bad instinct that we find amongst us. In the sense that if a poor person asks for change on the street or asks for help on the street, we can sometimes be mean to them. Why don't you go find a job? Why don't you do this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no. Just like we found you poor and we helped you, just like that, that poor person is not poor because he did something wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him that way. Do not repel him. Do not be mean to him. Do not be unkind to him. And the bounty of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you, spread it. Tell it to others. Meaning that don't ascribe your good fortune to yourselves. Don't say that it is because of my job or it is because of my you know, intellect that I was able to earn the money I have or that my house or my, my, my car or my phone, etc. That this is somehow my doing. No. Remember, these are favors of your Lord and you should report them as such. You should call them as such that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not from me personally. So that was a quick uh, overview of Surah Al-Duha from start to finish. We covered uh, in a little bit, uh, in slightly quickly, the entire Surah Al-Duha. I didn't want to go into a lot of detail. All right. <clears throat> Finally, I'm going to go to manage participants. I'm going to unmute everybody. Okay. <clears throat> All right. From the oops, slideshow. Slide. Okay. Oof. What do I need from you guys? What I need from you are your suggestions. What topics do you think I should cover? What do you think that will benefit you in the future? And any questions or challenges that you face on a daily basis and any other topics that you think that uh, would be beneficial. So I'm gonna open the floor. Uh, you are all on unmute. I would say don't try not to speak over each other one at a time. What do you think the, some of the topics I can cover? What do you think some of the information that might be of benefit to you? Any questions or any uh, challenges that you might face on a daily basis that you cover in these lectures? Okay, uh, can somebody say something just to make sure that you heard me? <laughs> okay, I hear, I hear Mariam. Yeah. Anybody else? Ah, Faisal. G. आवाज आ रही है? जी बिल्कुल आ रही है खाला. हाँ, बेटा ये जो तुम्हारा सबसे पहला था ना ये मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा कि कुरान हमें क्यों पढ़ना चाहिए क्योंकि बीइंग अ पेरेंट जब हम बच्चों को कुरान पढ़ने का बताते हैं तो वो सबसे पहले हमें सवाल यही करते हैं कि why I have to read this every day तो मेरे ख्याल से ये बहुत अच्छी चीज है कि कुरान को क्यों पढ़ना चाहिए उनको ये जो rights और responsibilities तुमने बताई हैं ना okay so let's I'll spend a little more time on this one ठीक है ताकि आप लोगों को पता चले या thank you 
قرآن کے جو حقوق ہیں آئی وانٹ اردو آل آف ازن لیٹس ناٹ ڈو دیٹ اٹس گنا بی اپلوڈ ٹو یو ٹیوب لیٹس گو اسٹیک دا لیفٹ ہینڈ سائڈ یو ہیو دا رائٹس آف دا قرآن دیز آر وٹ یو مسٹ ڈو فار دا قرآن ان آرڈر فار دا قرآن ٹو ففل اٹس ریسپانسبلٹیز ناؤ آن دا رائٹ ہینڈ سائڈ دا فائیو تھنگس دیٹ آر مینشن ہیئر دیر از نو پرسن ان دا ورلڈ ہو ڈز ناٹ وش to have these protected. Who does not wish for these to be sacred? Who does not wish to be, these to be, uh, to be safeguarded, to be secured? For most of our children, they don't have much wealth yet. But they're going to, so for example, for them, you can, once you recite, understand and implement, you can slowly but surely tell them because Typically, the one mistake that I see among, among people when it comes to the Quran, and this is a mistake that I experienced myself, is that the emphasis on just on the recitation, that kisi tarah nazra ho jai, just end-to-end read the Quran. And typically, these children, they grow up with the Quran as if it is, it's, they seem disconnected from it. They don't understand it. And because they don't understand it, they have difficulty implementing it. And because they don't implement it, they don't see these benefits manifesting themselves in their lives personally. Meaning that one, if you fulfill these rights of the Quran, you will slowly see how the Quran protects your wealth, protects your life, protects your intellect, protects your honor, protects your decency, protects your faith. How does it do that? You will see. Once you recite, you understand, you implement. And these five things, protection of these five things are the reason the Quran was revealed. The Quran benefit, its subject, the purpose of the Quran, its subject is human beings. Its subject is people. Its subject is us. And its purpose is to protect our faith, our honor, our decency, our intellect, our brain. our life and our wealth. If your children ask you, well, why do I have to recite and understand and implement? Well, well, well this is a lot of work. You can tell them, this is the Quran will protect your faith, your honor, your decency and intellect. And all of these, we will, the rest of the lectures that I'm going to give, I will give one at a time. What is it? So if the Quran tells you not to commit zina, it protects your life. It protects your honor and it protects your decency. It protects your health. If the Quran tells you to stay away from gambling and from alcohol, that is so that your intellect will be protected. It's so that your wealth will be protected and you won't throw it away with gambling. And if, you, if you're drinking, your intellect will not be decreased and you won't become a drunkard. Similarly, each and every verse, each and every chapter of the Quran addresses one of these five points, either to protect the faith, the honor, the intellect, life, or wealth of human beings. And I'll go into details of each lecture when I go. Um, so I'm glad this was able to help. Yeah. Thank you, Faisal. Inshallah. You can hear us? You can. D. Islam, Faisal, beta. Wa alaikum salam, khala. بیٹا ماشاء اللہ بہت اچھا سب رہا بہت اچھا آپ نے بتایا اب یہ سب لوگوں سے پوچھ لے کہ آیا وہ تھرٹی سپارے کو لے کے چلنا چاہ رہے ہیں یا جہاں سے قرآن شروع ہو رہا ہے جو ترتیب اللہ سبحانہ اللہ تعالیٰ نے رکھی ہے قرآن میں اس ترتیب سے ہمیں جانا چاہیے یہ باقی لوگوں سے بھی پوچھ لو اور آپ بھی اپنی فیڈ بیک دے دو بیٹا قرآن کی ترتیب اگر آپ نے اس طریقے سے پڑھنی ہے جس طریقے سے قرآن ریویل ہوا ہے اس میں بھی کوئی غلطی نہیں ہے قرآن میں بینیفٹ ہی بینیفٹ ہے آپ چاہے شروع سے آخر تک پڑھیں آخر سے شروع تک پڑھیں درمیان سے کہیں سے شروع ہو جائیں نو پرابلم ٹھیک ہے قرآن کا جو کیا نام ہے جو صحیح جو بیسکلی مائی اوریجنل تھاٹ بہائنڈ دس واز میرا مائی اوریجنل تھاٹ بہائنڈ دس واز آئی از گوئنگ ٹو ٹرائی ٹو شو ود ایچ اینڈ ایوری ورس ایچ اینڈ ایوری سورا اینڈ پک ون سورا ایٹ اے ٹائم وچ ایور ون آئی تھنک ول بی امپورٹنٹ ٹو ٹیچ یو گائز how it implements and how it affects you. But if you want, we can go from... Absolutely. I agree with Faisal's talk. 
बिल्कुल सही है फैजल मतलब एक सूरत को लेकर चलो ये नहीं है कि शुरू से जैसे सूरा बकरा फिर आल इमरान इस तरह नहीं एक एक सूरा या एक एक आयत को लेकर उसको फिर तुम उसकी वो बताओ तफसीर इस तरह से सही रहेगा को, या कोई एक टॉपिक चूज कर लो तो इस तरह से रहेगा ठीक सही रहेगा नो प्रॉब्लम मैं इस तरह भी कर सकता हूँ क्योंकि कुरान को पढ़ने का एक तरीका नहीं है कई तरीके हैं ठीक है अगर आपने कुरान को पढ़ना है आप शुरू से लेकर आखिर तक भी पढ़ सकते हैं आप उस तर, उस क्रोनोलॉजिकल ऑर्डर में पढ़ सकते हैं जिस ऑर्डर में कुरान रिवील हुआ मसलन सबसे पहले कुरान की कौन सी आयत उतरी और सबसे आखिर में क्या कहते हैं सूरत नसर ये नसरत अगर आप शुरू से शुरू करें और आखिर तक स्टार्ट करें आप तीसवें में शुरू होंगे और तीसवें में खत्म करेंगे बेसिकली यू कैन स्टार्ट इन दर्टी एंड एंड इन दर्टी इफ you read the quran in its chronological order but i would like to organize these by subject and i think that's what i heard that we should organize these by subject i'll leave the rest up to you guys i think that's a good idea ha mera bhi yahi khayal hai ke by subject hona chahiye aur jab ayaton ki selection ho to usme un ayat un suraton ko selection kiya jaye which deals with the upbringing of the children Uh, that is a one of the one of the major problem we have, we may face in future you you probably emphasize on those sura which deals how we can bring our kids better theek hai okay that's a good point that's uh, highlighting the important character building in our kids that's good okay assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam बात कर रही हूँ माशा सबसे ब्यूटीफुल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस बहुत ज्यादा अच्छा लगा सुन के लेकिन हाउ बच्चों को कैसे रिलेट किया जाए कि उनको कैसे इंस्टिल कराया जाए कि हाउ इम्पोर्टेंट इट इज फॉर अस गुड क्वेश्चन क्या मतलब बच्चों लाइक मैस किड्स व्हेन वी यूज्ड टू बी ट्रांसलेशन इट नेवर आई नेवर फेल्ट कनेक्टेड एंड आई फील द सेम फॉर आवर किड्स लाइक आई फील आई फील लाइक देयर शुड बी लाइक अ किड वर्जन ऑफ कुरान वेयर दे कैन काइंड ऑफ बिकॉज़ जैसे सूरह में भी दे डोंट नो व्हाट द बैड डेज आर दे डोंट नो व्हाट द बिकॉज़ माशाल्लाह बच्चों के लिए तो एवरीथिंग इज माशाल्लाह रोजी राइट नाउ दे डोंट नो के अप्स एंड डाउन्स क्या होते हैं लाइफ के अंदर और दैट्स व्हाई आई ऑफन टाइम्स फील के बच्चे बिल्कुल रिलेट कर नहीं पाते हैं सो व्हाट यू सजेस्ट what we suggest what i suggest is you number one if they are young enough if they are too young in the sense that like you said children have very rosy outlooks so as children grow up you slightly have to let go and basically somebody who is as young as your youngest daughter sana uh, that she all she has or her concerns are with the milk and food and that's it right aiza is growing up her concerns are slightly more she is what 9 years old now mashallah should should turn, turn, maybe turning 10 or something yeah she will be turning 10 she'll be turning 10 teenagers will be slightly different as we grow our all of these concerns they start to change a little bit especially hmm. when we're starting to reach puberty especially when we're starting to reach puberty around the age of i'm going to say 12 13 that's when our entire body chemistry and physical chemistry starts to change so yeah. when they're so young as if like they're way below that age they're pretty much entirely our, under our control at that point you can do what i like to call a little bit of parenting in the sense that hey you're doing this just because i'm telling you to do this they're yeah. young okay they don't need to know why they'll and, and basically children they're so young they're very young in the sense that they're very eager to please you right. right but as they start to become older as they start to become teenagers their their concerns start to shift they're no longer so much concerned with pleasing you but they start to a little bit you know tell me something about me what does it have anything to do with me so hmm. your your parenting style and the style of teaching the quran has to shift based on your child if she's growing up and she's asking or he or she is asking the questions well what does it have to do with me then that's the time you teach them about this stuff but if the child is so young as you know she's just what 3 3 years old the uh, or 4 years old then 
her question of what honor, decency, intellect, wealth, life is, these are things that concern us. But when we start to become teenagers, that's a different story. That's when it's start time to start asking them these questions and presenting them and challenging their intellect. Every teenager, without exception, without exception, goes through a challenging phase in their life. They question mm -hmm. themselves. They question their existence. They question who they are. Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? Why am I going through all these changes? Sometimes life is hard. Not everything that I want to happen happens. What do I deal with this? Every teenager goes through this. But an infant had, does not have these concerns. A four-year-old does not have these concerns. So the style of teaching the Quran has to shift. For a baby, all you have to tell them is you're doing it because I'm telling you. But as they get older, your style has to shift. You have to tell them this is how it's important to you. This is how it applies to you. This is how it's going to protect your life, your honor, your decency, your intellect. And when you get to, as the age matures more and more and more, the Quran will adapt to you. The Quran, as I read it more and more, as my physical experiences change, every time I read the Quran, I rediscover something new. And your teenagers will discover new things as well. Hmm. Thank you so much. Maybe that's uh, mashallah helpful. So don't worry. I will cover the Quran from a kid's perspective and how it, how, how it applies to them. But I will also ask these questions because some, a lot of us as adults haven't thought about these questions. So some of the questions that I will raise and that will shake you is, why is it that we're Muslim anyway? And these are questions that when you're living in a non-Muslim country, these are going to come up. Okay. Why is it that you're Muslim? Are you Muslim because your parents are Muslim? Or did you read this book and do you really think that there is a hereafter? Well, if you really think, do you really, do you really think there is a hereafter? Okay. Now, these questions as we grow older, you know, these come into our head, like, why do we believe this? Why is it that we believe that there is a God, that there is a hereafter, that there are prophets, that there are books? And why is it important to us? So all these questions we will go over in detail. Uh, okay. Well, I don't hear anything else on the line. If that is it, Jazakallah uh, khair for coming. Inshallah, we will continue this on a weekly basis. Now, I hope everybody who is on the line has written in the chat window an email that I will email to them next time. Meaning, in the chat window, enter an email that I will email you your uh, meeting invite next time. This way, we won't have to do what we did this time. We, what we had to do was Razia Khala had to you know, call everybody and things like that, which is fine for the first meeting. That's okay. But every subsequent meeting at around 1045, I will open the bridge line and I will send an email to everybody and that you can just click that email link and it will put you directly in the meeting. You won't have to you know, click anything. You won't have to enter the meeting ID, etc. That won't happen. All you will really have to do is click the link and it will just take you into the meeting. So just be sure to put your uh, email address in the chat window. Uh, and if there is any other questions, let me know. Okay. Jazakallah. Okay, Faisal. Okay, is that is it. Jazakallah khair for everybody. And I will see you next time. What, to, what date is it today? Today is the 13th. Thank you, Faisal. Did you forget your date today, Faisal? No, no. Today's date is very good. Today's birthday is today. Today's birthday is today. Today's birthday is today. Oh, mashallah. Today's birthday is today. Today's birthday is today, mashallah. Happy birthday, Mara. Thank you. 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 Thank you.